old Northwestern Pacific Railroad. I'm Sean Mitchell. I'm the VP of Timber Heritage Association. We're going to be going for a little ride today in the 1984 Chevy Suburban high rail truck. Uh, we're going to be cruising along the line and stopping in a few places and talking about some of the history of the line. We spent hundreds of hours clearing the track this year, um, getting ready for our speeder rides. And unfortunately, because of the COVID situation, we had to shut down again. So we're going to give you a little glimpse about what we're trying to do out here uh, especially with the um, continued use of the rails for the speeders and then eventually we're hoping that we can actually have what we're going to call the humboldt bay scenic railroad so let's go ahead and get rolling down the tracks two blasts of the horn mean we're going forward got my headlights on and we're rolling So we're actually rolling past the old Hammond Lumber Company, former Vance Lumber Company mill and railroad shop site. Through the trees over there, you can see the historic 1893 Samoa Roundhouse. We also have the boiler shop, machine shop, blacksmith shop, and car barn. So we're rolling through a driveway here. So just a little bit about the machine that we're rolling in today. Like I said, this is a 1984 Chevy Suburban. Um, we're fairly confident that it came from the Southern Pacific Railroad. Can't really find any evidence that it actually worked up here on NWP, but this is the kind of vehicle they would use to, you know, shuttle train crews, maybe shuttle railroad employees. Let's go through this crossing. So if there was any reason that the railroad's crews would have to actually get down the tracks without the use of a full locomotive or train, which obviously takes more crew, takes, you know, more resources to actually get going down the track, they would use vehicles like this. They came in a variety of different, um, you know, styles. There were high rail trucks, there's high rail, um, you know, vans. Uh, in this case, the Suburban is practically a looks like a school bus rolling down the rails, but the great thing about it is that it's actually a three row old school SUV. So we're hoping that one day we can actually use this for private tours. Um, the other advantage of a, a Suburban like this is that it's enclosed, whereas the speeders that we run, the AMR and the TPL speeders, they're sort of a open air, almost like a trolley. Um, so it's, it's a little bit more difficult to take them out in inclement weather. So rolling up here, um, we're actually getting to the point where the old um, Vance Lumber Co. and later Hammond Railroad spur line would have come in. So it would have come in from the bay side in here to the tracks. Now this bridge, the Samoa Bridge, which many of us are familiar with, probably driven over it, this wasn't built until 1971. So this was a much different scenario back in the day um, and actually looking off towards the northeast here you can see the old pilings this is actually the former site of the Dolbeer and Carson Lumber Company uh, they had a um, an engine house out here and this is where um, our Dolbeer and Carson number three used to live there's a few other Dolbeer and Carson locomotives they had um, and at one point, that locomotive actually broke free on its own and got in a train wreck. And we'll talk about that in just a few. So this is the old site. They also had a, um, a bit of a wharf that went out there. And the wharf was used for shipping. Uh, this was the Humboldt Northern Line. So it's funny because we just have this one uh, somewhat disused, not abandoned, but disused railroad that we run on today. But at one point, there were three or four separate railroads that operated out here. Now, the last railroad that actually operated on these tracks, uh, this was actually part of the Northwestern Pacific Railroad. Uh, that was a subsidiary of the Southern Pacific Railroad. 
Um, it was a joint venture between the Santa Fe and Southern Pacific companies. Uh, they realized all the way back in 1907 that it wasn't going to be possible to actually build two railroads from Willits all the way to Eureka because of the tight confines of the Eel River corridor. So they decided to go in on it together and in 1914 this railroad was completed and at one point you could actually ride a Northwestern Pacific ferry from San Francisco, take it on up to Tiburon and you could actually hop on the train and ride it all the way to Eureka. There was actually passenger service that came out here to Samoa as well. And a lot of people don't realize that there was also an entire separate rail line of the Northwestern Pacific, a branch line that went up through um, Fieldbrook and then all the way up to uh, Trinidad. There's even a little engine house and turntable up in Trinidad. So this line continued to run um, all the way up until 1998. Back in the 20s, Santa Fe uh, divested and it became a 100% um, owned subsidiary of the Southern Pacific Railroad. So SP leased their equipment on the Northwestern Pacific and just like any other railroad, they went from you know the steam era, then in the late 40s to early 50s, we started seeing dieselization. So they started running diesel engines up here. And really, SP operated uh, the NWP until the early 1980s. There was a tunnel fire at Island Mountain in 1978, which really hurt business because the railroad was shut down for 15 months. After that point, the railroad tried to abandon it. Um, and in 1982, uh, that was around that time, it was actually shut down and they, they weren't allowed to abandon it because they recognized that this railroad was just too important for the North Coast. And so it wasn't until about 19, I believe it was 1982, that officially Southern Pacific let go of the Willits to Eureka portion. And there was a guy who used to be a Southern Pacific executive um, named Brian Whipple. And Brian Whipple um, ended up purchasing this portion of the line and he operated they operated trains from Willits to Eureka also out to Carlotta and out here to Samoa under the name of Eureka Southern. Eureka Southern lasted about 18 months until it went bankrupt. Uh, really aggressive uh, winter storms during that time and some really just deferred maintenance for the Southern Pacific era and they ended up going bankrupt and at that point it was pretty difficult for them to you know operate in the black so after that point there was a, a time period from about 86 or 84 86 or so all the way until about 1992 where Eureka Southern still existed but they were kind of in a bankruptcy collector type of situation and at that point it ended up becoming the North Coast Railroad Authority ownership in about 1992. So I wanted to stop here for just a second and take a look at these pilings. Actually, we'll back up here. So I mentioned earlier that the Dolby and Carson Railroad, the Humboldt Northern Railroad, I should say, they actually had their own trackage that ran out here in the bay. We're going to back up here so that you can see this. So this is the former Humboldt Northern railroad that went along the bay on these pilings. The really interesting thing is back in the 1920s, I believe it was July of 1923, the Dover and Carson actually had a train wreck out here. So we believe it was probably a Sunday and the train crews were down there in the engine house and they were working on the, uh, the number three, it's a 262 Baldwin. Um, and they were working on that locomotive and they had done some repairs to it, maybe just some maintenance. And somebody left the Johnson bar, which is kind of like the gear shift for a steam locomotive. They left the Johnson bar in reverse and the throttle was slightly open. So the crews come down to the shop on a Monday morning and they hook the locomotive up to a shop steam line, which was convention in those days. They'd actually have a shop boiler that would get the locomotive up to steam and you want to do that more slowly you do not want to shock a boiler up to steam and up to pressure so they hooked the thing up and then the guys went out to the uh the cookhouse to get breakfast 
what they didn't realize is that the locomotive was on a course to actually roll down the tracks. So while they weren't there, it built up enough steam and it actually broke free of the shop boiler and rolled down the tracks. So it left that engine house area, which is pretty much where the current um, Samoa Bridge is, built up enough steam, broke free, and it backed down the tracks, and it actually hit a derail. And the derail is basically like a protection device. It bolts to the tracks and makes it so that the locomotive or any type of rolling stock isn't going to intersect with an active line, which we're sitting on today. So the locomotive ended up hitting the derail, uh, flipped into the bay, um, nobody was hurt because nobody was on it. So the locomotive actually flipped into the bay and from what we understand, it sat there almost six months in the muck. Um, and at that point, it was Mercer Fraser, company that's still around. They ended up doing a lot of trestle building and that type of stuff back in the day. They actually built a whole new trestle around it and recovered it. And the engine got put back into service and eventually ended up out here at Samoa back in the THA collection. So if you were here in the 1920s, you would actually see, um, it would technically be a type of diamond. And a diamond would basically be where a section of track would cross. So it would come over here from the bay side, cross over pretty much at this point. And the interesting thing is that today you can sort of still see the right of way. It's pretty much where those power lines are. Um, and it would divert and basically go north and eventually it would meet up which with what would eventually become the uh, the Hammond line and the Hammond trail So as we're rolling along here, I just want to finish the story about the Northwestern Pacific. Um, that railroad continued to operate, like I said, until 1982, ended up becoming Eureka Southern, and then in 1992, um, 82 and then 1992, um, ended up becoming the North Coast Railroad operated by the North Coast Railroad Authority. And they are the um, current owners of this line. The North Coast Railroad Authority, and this railroad is um, slated to uh, become rail banked. And what that means is, um, it's kind of like abandonment light. Um, they're still they're going to abandon it, but it'll make it so that the property remains uh, railroad property and the easement remains. So they're trying to build a trail from Eureka south to Willits called the Great Redwood Trail, um, and THA is totally in favor of what, whatever rail front or trail projects but we're really hoping that we can preserve this 16 miles from uh, Samoa out here that way towards Manila through Arcata and on to Eureka that's a total of 16 miles which is just a small percentage of the original 305 miles So THA is a 100% volunteer organization. We come out here and we clear track and we make sure that the right of way is open for our maintenance away vehicles. Uh, maintenance away meaning, you know, just lightweight rail vehicles that can operate on tracks like this. And we run our speeders out here. Um, it's a really popular program. A lot of people love doing it. Uh, we're just hoping that you know, with our continued stewardship of this railroad corridor, we can eventually use this for full-size excursion trains. And we think it would be an absolutely amazing tourist opportunity because it would allow for the use of the rails around the bay. Really, we're only looking at Samoa to Eureka, like I said before, and it could be used in conjunction with 
um, the Matakit, which is a you know amazing boat ride around the bay and the historic 1910 Matakit vessel. Um, and we think that it would be a really excellent thing for tourism in this area. Uh, there's so many popular examples like uh, the skunk train between Fort Bragg and Willits, and of course, uh, you know, places like Niles Canyon um, down in Fremont, and then also the Oregon Coast Scenic Railroad. Um, there's a real renaissance in this country of people that want to get out and ride the rails because, you know, not only is it historic, but it's just a new perspective. We can roll past wildlife and they're not really bothered by the, uh, you know, the machines. We can uh, see these uh, bayfront uh, perspectives and we think it would be a really, really awesome time to get to go down to the Samoa Cookhouse. Um, you know, get to ride the train into Old Town Eureka. We love the idea of riding the train into uh, Arts Alive in Old Town, just like they used to do in the 1990s. So we're going to go ahead and back up now, head on back to Samoa.